Hello folks, my name is Travis and welcome to this edition of Hope on Wheels. In this edition of Hope on Wheels, I'm going to do something that I'm actually kind of excited about for me as a YouTube content creator. Uh, I'm going to respond to some questions that were left on a video that I did about a year ago. Specifically, it was a video in regards to the Ticket to Work program. The questions were pretty uh, compelling, and for someone like me who, um, shall we say, even with voice dictation software, is not the best at writing and catching everything, I felt that because there were two questions, one I got last week and one over the weekend, at least according to the information I received, um, I would just go ahead and make a small video about them. The first question was, um, how do I stand a chance of getting a job with a Ticket to Work program because all the applications and stuff they're sending me are repetitive and they're the same ones I've already filled out and they're not going anywhere. To my knowledge, now again, before I really dive into this, let me let me be very clear. I am not an expert on any of this. I'm mostly going off the years of experience of being a part of the disability system as far as federally and otherwise goes. So please take what I say and don't assume that I'm an expert because I'm not by any means, folks. Uh, but... The um, question had to do with how do I best stand a chance by using that program of getting a job. The reality is the Ticket to Work program is not designed to help you get a job. It is designed to help you make sure with your benefits that you get a job that allows you to stay within your benefits or helps you make a decision to get a job and keep it that will keep you off your benefits. Now, when I say off your benefits, I'm just talking about the Social Security aspect of it. There are ways to keep Medicare, Medicaid, all that stuff intact. I am not going to go into that because it's outside of the scope of what this video's intentions are. But really, I mean, at least for me, um, the federal government with the Ticket to Work program never helped me get a job, okay? So if somebody's using their assistance, obviously you know it more in that area than I do because I've never used them for that. And on personal opinion, I would never try to use them for that just because they're not, um, they're not reliable not the least of which is the only reason I even knew about the Ticket to Work program was because when I got the job back at Best Buy a little over three years ago, um, I turned in my wages. When I did that, it led me to find out about the Ticket to Work program because Social Security still had on file that I was working for another company. Even though Five years prior to that, I had turned in that I quit working for them. One thing led to another. It was a huge mess. I won't go into that. But anyway, um, the Ticket to Work program found a local benefit analysis person in my area that I got in contact with. She went through all the stages of getting all the paperwork together going over my benefits backwards and forwards, and then wrote up a comprehensive report, told me what I could make per hour based on the job I had at the time. Most of the time, from what she told me, now again, I reiterate, I am not an expert in this at all, but from what she told me, those numbers never change. 
as far as what you're able to make based on uh, your top amount of income without losing your Social Security disability under certain circumstances. Everybody's circumstances are different, but like I could only make up to a certain amount of money per hour and only work 20 hours a week. Otherwise, I would run the risk of uh, losing my Social Security. And for me, ultimately, at some point in my life, that's what I'd love to do is get off of Social Security. Um, there's aspects to Social Security that are not great. However, until I can manage that and switch over to a different program, I have to follow the rules because if I don't, I lose not only my Social Security benefits, but my Medicaid benefits because they're tied together, which then means I lose my waiver, which is what pays for the supports I need to live. So it's kind of in tandem. But they helped me learn what all that stuff is. They told me about it. They explained it all out. And then I moved forward from there. If you really want to get a job, I would suggest going to the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation, which is a state-run program. Every state has one, and they are known for helping people with disabilities find a job within the field that either they want or DVR is known for doing a comprehensive assessment of the person, not because they're asked, but usually it's the first step that they do anyway, unless in my case the counselor really knows me backwards and forwards. If you've been going to DVR forever, then you already know all this. But if they don't know you, they'll want to do a comprehensive assessment to learn about you. If they do that, then they can kind of guide you in a direction that will work for you. Now, generally, if you haven't had a benefit analysis done, they are going to tell you that they will work with you, but they insist on getting one of those done so that whatever job they help you find doesn't cause you to lose your benefits. Because if there's too much stuff that you need support in, the last thing they want to do is get you employed, but then you can't get up out of bed to go to work. DVR is better for finding jobs for people with disabilities than relying on the federal government programs to do it because DVR in your area is going to understand what is possible in the area and it's also going to help you understand for you for what your career goals are if you have any career goals what your options are and if you don't have career goals they can help guide you to a direction that'll get you a job. I wouldn't recommend relying on the federal government to help you locate one. Use DVR. They're good for that. I'm using them now to further my skills in the job that I currently have. The other question I that was sent to me um, regarding the same program was, can you work part-time? and be a part of this program? The answer is you're not part of the program whether you work part-time or not. It's not really a program in the sense of they have you permanently listed as you're on the Ticket to Work, ticket to work program. It's a program that will help you figure out, can I work with the things I need? Do I qualify? And if I do, what are the things that I have to do as a person to be able to work and still get the benefits I need or get off of benefits if that's what I choose to do and not need the system anymore. It's your choice, folks, but it's not a program that you're permanently on. But to answer your question as far as this goes, if you're receiving Social Security disability income benefits, for example, and you need you're, you need Medicaid because Medicaid pays for your support needs of either you or if you're a guardian of the person you're a guardian for, you'll know how much you can make without losing your benefits. Generally, 
in order to do that, that means working part-time and working part-time only in order to not um, lose your benefits. But again, that's just general. I say it again, I am not an expert in this field. And the three years I've now been doing this, it was three years as of last week, I will tell you, I have learned a lot that I didn't even know existed. I've also learned there's loopholes in a system that you don't even want to know about, or not that you don't want to know about, that the feds sometimes don't want to tell you because they don't want you to know it exists. It's not perfect. <laughs> it's just the way that it is. I'm not speaking bad on the feds because I don't think they're a good organization. I'm saying that unless you ask, you're not going to know. But relying on the feds to help you find a job through the Ticket to Work program, no, that's not what that's designed for. It's designed to see if you're eligible to be a part of that program. And if you are, get a benefit analysis done, and they will put that on your record that you've had that done as part of the Ticket to Work program. But once you're on it, it doesn't change your benefits. It doesn't change anything. It just lets you know what you're able to do without losing your benefits or if you do something that could cause you to lose benefits or, in my view, the ultimate thing, what, how much money and where to draw the line that would pull you off of benefits and then if you still needed to do or have Medicaid and Medicare support, the programs you could enroll into to, to keep all of that. And there are programs that can do that. I'm not going to go into that because it'll make the video too long and it's outside the scope of this video. But there are ways to be able to make enough money to get off benefits but still keep your waiver benefits intact if that's what you choose to do. I hope this video answered those questions for you. For those of you that posted those questions, if anybody has any questions or concerns, you can leave them down in the comments below or you can email me at T as in Travis, Noah, N-O-A-H, the whole email address is lowercase, at Hope, H-O-P-E, Alaska, A-L-A-S-K-A, dot org. And you will get a hold of me directly, and I will do my best to answer those questions, folks. Take care. Have a good day, and God bless.